I'm Doug and welcome to Doppler's Gear Garage. In this video, we're talking about the brand new Tonex editor and it is awesome. There's been a lot of requests for being able to edit the presets on your devices in real time and it does that and much more. All right, got two main things we're gonna accomplish. In a moment, we're gonna talk about five things to get you up and running with the Tonex editor fast. Then down below, you've got links to be able to download three presets that are basically work files for what we're gonna do in the back half of this video. All this is marked out with chapters you can get to whatever content you want. So the deal is I'm gonna kind of walk through the workflow of how I created those presets. And in the third one, I did something particularly interesting. Once I created the preset, I was like, well, what if I wanna swap out the amp slash tone model amplifier? And so what I did is I went into the librarian, I organized the amps alphabetically, and then you can just use down and up arrows to just toggle between the different amp sounds to find the one that's perfect for the preset. As an end result, the one that I started with was not the one that I ended up with. In case we'll get to that in the back part of the video. In the meantime, let's talk about five things to get you up and running fast with the Tonex Editor. Five things to get you up and running fast with Tonex Editor. Number one, before you launch the editor, launch the Tonex app and back up the library on your device or devices. Super important, super easy to do, doesn't take a lot of time. Number two, once you've downloaded the editor and connected your device via USB, you're now going to get a prompt to update your firmware. Do so. Now that takes about 30 seconds, give or take, so it's a pretty fast process. Number three, you can connect more than one Tonex device to your editor kind of at the same time. You just kind of have to toggle back and forth between them. You select them in the upper right-hand corner. Number four, there are two main tabs that you're gonna to be toggling back and forth in between in the Tonex editor. There's the editor tab and the librarian tab. Number five, Right now, you're taking a look at the editor from my Tonex pedal. And if you look closely, you're going to see there is a revert tab slash button and a save tab slash button. Revert allows you to make a change to a preset and it'll revert back to the save preset. If you make two changes, it will only revert back to the save preset. So if you want to save changes, you need to hit the save button. Now, moving over to my Tone X1, you're going to notice that we no longer have the revert or save tabs. What's up with that? So here's the deal. Tone X1 only stores 20 presets, where Tone X Pedal has 50 banks with three presets per bank. So people are going to be much more inclined to work off of, if you will, Tone X Pedal as kind of a hard drive, right? Swapping things around, overriding, so on and so forth, where the workflow for Tone X1 is going to be incorporating both the editor and the librarian. One, backing up your device, which I've done a bunch of times in the process of utilizing this process. And number two, then kind of toggling back and forth between pushing different presets to the device. Tone X1 is great, but it's got a slightly smaller memory, so you're going to spend a lot more time toggling between those two windows. All right, let's get to the demos. So now that you've heard the first demo, I'm gonna show you how, if you're so inclined, to import that preset into your device and also kind of go through some of the nuances of working through the interface and some editing stuff and a bunch of things that I think are gonna be really valuable as you get used to working with Tonex Editor. So let's get started. So it's time to put on my glasses and we're gonna have some fun here. For some of you, this is old hat. For others, this is gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm gonna do my best to make it really straightforward there's some terminology that I'm going to do my best to make it very clear what it is. And the process, we're going to make it the organic process that it is for you because it's really not that complicated. Kind of once you understand what the steps are. That is to say, in a moment, we're going to import the preset that you just heard for that demo. But there's a little bit of the lay of the land that we want to talk about first. All right, we talked about the edit tab or the editor tab and the librarian tab. 
editor tab just allows you to see all the presets that are on your device. Librarian tab mirrors that in this left window. And on the right window here, you basically have three, what we're going to call browsers. One that's a preset browser looking at the presets that are stored locally on your computer. One that looks at the tone models that are on your computer. And one that looks at the tone models on ToneNet, which is basically in the cloud. You can bring them over from ToneNet to your machine by downloading them. And basically the difference between a tone model and a preset is as follows. Let's head back over here. Basically, an amplifier and a cabinet are the main components that make up a tone model. You can have pedals, but generally it's just the capture of the raw goods. And when we start cloaking it in effects, we go from tone models to presets. That is to say, the finished goods, it's a preset. The raw amp on its own before you put all the good stuff on it, and it will be the amp in the cabinet, but it's just the tone model. And you cloak that in effects, you get your presets. All right, now, up in the right-hand corner, very important thing is the global setup. This little guy right here, volume, and this is the input trim. I had to set this to be the same on both my devices to make them sound the same. This is really important because it really controls how hard you're driving your virtual amps. I've got mine set at positive 8.5. I think that's a great place to start. If you got really high output pickups, you might want to bring it down. All right. Now, here's the deal. If I am in my librarian window and I'm in the preset browser and I want to export a preset, I basically do that and I save it to a folder that I've created, in this case called, wait for it, IK Tonix Editor Presets. If I want to import a preset, it's not nearly as straightforward. However, gosh darn it, it can't be that complicated. And that's right, if you just kind of drag and drop it in the preset window, lo and behold, it appears. And in turn, if we want to bring it over to our device, we drag and drop it over there and boom, we overwrite that preset. Okay, I'm going to jump back to the editor here. So here's the deal. All this stuff from left to right is your signal chain. There are a couple of different ways to turn things on and off. If I select the gate block that is right now off, I can turn it on like this. I can turn it on like this. And the advantage is, say I'm editing my amp, I can turn that on or off from there like that with that little mini toggle. All right, per this preset, I'm not using the gate. I am using the compressor, amp, and you're going to note the link cabinet is selected. That means that the cabinet that was captured at the same time as this amp is bundled in there. I'm not using any modulation, no delay, and I am using reverb. Let's talk about the compressor. You have your choice of putting the compressor before or after the amplifier. In this particular of a sound, it's very important to me to put it beforehand. I'm doing a couple of specific things. The threshold, as you bring that up, is the point at which the compressor begins to grab. The gain compensates for the fact that the compressor has a tendency to make things a little bit quieter. And the attack is the amount of time it takes before the compressor actually reacts. In this case, I've got a fairly high reaction time of 40. So it's, what it does is it lets the transients through, but kind of grabs things and keeps them from getting too wide in the hips. It's kind of like liposuction to keep the guitar crisp on the top so you get the sound of the pick, but making it so it just doesn't get too wide as the notes kind of start to bloom. It's a really great strategy that I've kind of wandered into. Not necessarily brilliance, but I've really, as of late, have been working, trying to fine tune, keeping the transient, that is to say the pick attack, present without losing the intensity when you want for this type of a sound of that attack, but at the same time, then making the guitar a little bit smaller as it starts to bloom. In terms of the amp here, a couple of things are going on. Because I have the gain fairly low, I've got the output high. Now, in terms of the bass, I don't have the bass too high. One of the great things about the setup 
is you can choose the EQ points, not just how much bass, mid, or treble you've got. And you've got a Q, which for those of you who don't know, it's basically saying how wide or how narrow that EQ goes out from that EQ point. Really cool. That's only available in the mid-range treble functions like the bass. Now, the presence is how I'm using these days to add, once I've got enough treble, the presence is where I add that extra bit of top end. And again, in the last video uh, on the Tonex One Joe Satriani limited edition, I talk about kind of almost like a float when you're fishing, it kind of comes up above the water. So when I've got enough treble, but I need just a little bit more on the top end, that's where I do that with. The same thing is true with the depth control in that I don't have a huge amount of booming bass. I don't want that. And the way I did this was I kind of hit the low E string, kind of listened to it and kind of adjusted the bass. And then I added a little extra dip, depth there to add some additional body. Okay, now this link cab means again, that this is the cabinet that came captured with this amp. Not using modulation, not using delay. In the reverb here, I'm doing something kind of interesting. I've got a fairly high time. I'm using pre-delay. And that basically is adding a little bit of delay to the reverb. You don't really notice it where it's set, but you kind of feel it. In turn, I've got the, the, uh, the color, basically the tone control at high noon, and I've got the mix relatively low. And I will say that again, like the compressor where you can put it after the amp or before the amp, I want the compressor before the amp. I want to treat it before it goes to the amp. There are times you want to put it after, especially if you've got a really nice distorted sound. It's a good place to do it. The reverb, we definitely want it at the end of this chain. Generally speaking, I like to go modulation, delay reverb, but it does allow you to flip it around in case you want to. Okay, now, Let's say that we then have got this. We've made some changes. We save this guy. We go back over to the librarian window and the preset browser. And then we just export that puppy and we're good to go. That gets us to the next demo. So as we were talking about the last demo and the process, I used the word organic. And the thing is when I pick up an instrument and I start dialing in tones to kind of try and capture something, it is a very organic process. And if by chance you're new to the whole digital thing, it could first of all seem very foreign, but keep in mind that most of us, by the time we're done recording, are actually moving into the box and we live in the digital realm anyway. It's just in this particular case, we have all these tools that allow us to start in the digital domain and kind of craft our tones. So let's talk about what I was doing there. So that particular demo is called Midi Tele, as is the preset. And if you look over here to the left here, you're going to notice that the name of the preset is an italics with a little asterisk indicating that there's been a change since it was last saved. But that's because I was kind of poking around here as I was preparing to share this with you. Now, the interesting thing about this particular preset is I'm still using the compressor. I've got a faster attack time, so I'm getting a little bit more grab sooner on the compressor. And I brought the threshold down. Ironically, when you bring this number up, you're actually making it such that the decibel point at which the compressor grabs is actually lower. Okay, uh, I was using some delay going into the front end of the amplifier. That's kind of an old school vibe. The delay has two main modes, either tape or digital. And then you can select either a normal, just kind of single delays or ping pong where it's got this subdivision going left and right. That was set on tape and normal. I tried the digital, but it was just not the vibe that I was going for. It was a little too noticeable, actually a lot too noticeable. And in terms of the amp, this is a tone model of a Maz 18, and that's a great sounding amp. I basically changed everything in the EQ as I was messing with the delay and the reverb to really try and find the vibe of what I ended up with, which I was very happy with. Probably the biggest 
part of this that made the biggest difference is when I went in and started using the VIR, virtual IR. And I used a combination of a Shure SM57D, stands for dynamic, and an AKG 414C stands for condenser. And I had it, in terms of the blend, more towards the 57, which is kind of interesting, but it was a really organic sound and made a huge difference, markedly different without this VIR going on. Okay, in terms of the reverb, ironically, you can really hear the reverb in the demo, but I don't have a super long delay, or I should say reverb time on it. I have no pre-delay. The color is actually quite dark. And in terms of the mix, I've got a pretty low mix, but all those components together gave me that perfect little soup. All right, that gets us to the next demo. So one of my favorite things about working in the box with a deep editor is you begin to put together signal chains and as you kind of come up with the part, you massage the signal chain, work on the part a little bit more, come back and massage the signal chain there. And there I did a couple of different things that as I kind of swapped out amps and kind of found the right sound, that's what informed me to ultimately what I was going to play. So let's talk a little bit about how I got there. So this demo was really interesting because by the time I got to where I ended up, I used lots of different amps and cabinets, and I also changed the whole signal chain around a bunch in terms of what I was doing and how I was doing it. Where I ended up was using the noise gate so it would basically prevent me from having to use the volume control. And if you've got the guitar wide open and you mute the strings, it's gonna hum, so the gate basically silences the guitar. Also with that last little phrase, I slide down the neck, you've gotta have the gate set just right that when you're done playing, it grabs but doesn't cut off that last note. I'm gonna jump all the way down to the end here and talk about the reverb. I have got a ton of pre-delay, 330 milliseconds. That is basically like a nice fat delay before the quote unquote early reflections of the reverb come in. And so what it does is it keeps that reverb out of the way of your attack. So it's this really nice wash in the background. And if you take a look, I've got the color way back. So I've got it fairly dark sounding and I've got the mix fairly low. All right, now the magic of this really happened in terms of what was happening with the AMB cabinet toe model. Now, I'm gonna show you a really cool thing that I kind of stumbled into. And as you can see, well, hang on, they should be. I've now got the amp and cab linked. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this little library icon. It kind of looks like some books together. And I'm gonna go over to the software library tab. And basically you can see that you can select these different headers. All right, this is amp is based on. And as I scroll this, I can see that I'm at the top preset for PV when I select that. And once you've selected it, you can use the down or up arrows to audition different amps and cabinets. All right, I'm gonna close out of that for just a second. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unlink the cabinet because I actually really like this Marshall 412. So one of the other things that I could do is now go back in there and just kind of go through here and audition different amps. And if you take a look here, Sunday's Jam, that little cabinet guy is not gonna change. Just the amp is gonna change. So now everything in the signal chain is staying the same except for the amplifier. And this workflow is really cool for finding just the right sound to craft the part or having the part craft itself based on the sound of what you're hearing as you're sampling different amps and or cabinets. I love that workflow. So that gets us to the end of this video. I hope it has been informative for you. For more information about all these great Tonex products, please visit ikmultimedia.com. If by chance you haven't subscribed to my channel, I wanna invite you to do so and don't forget to ring the bell so I can let you know when more videos are gonna go online. With that said, thanks for watching. Cheers.